Hey guys, it's me, Jaren, back again with another Uncut Hoops reaction video. Hold on, let me cut my mic down real quick. Okay, there, now we're good. But yeah, we're back again with another Uncut Hoops reaction video. Uh, the analytics show that you guys love the Uncut Hoops reaction videos. Well, the Jeremy Lin video is an, uh, an Uncut Hoops video. But you guys love the NBA content in general. Uh, the Why Kendrick Perkins is Still the Worst Sports Analyst video has 918 views as a long-form video, which is, like, the third most viewed long-form video on the channel. And then we got both of these videos. We got the Why Kendrick Perkins is the Worst Sports Analyst video that has 1,700 views, which is the most viewed long-form video on the channel. And then... We have the Michael Jordan Fan Reacts, which is the first Uncut Hoops reaction video that has 761 views. So you guys love to see the Uncut Hoops reactions videos. So we are here reacting to one of the other worst sports analysts of all time, Shannon Sharp. For those who don't know who Shannon Sharp is, Shannon Sharp it was a, f a football player. A very good football player at that. Some widely consider him to be one of the best at his position, which is low-key, you could put up a pretty good argument about it. But I don't know why Shannon came to the basketball scene. Don't like it. And a lot of comments from the other two reaction videos saying that neither Shannon Sharp, JJ Redick, and um, Kendrick Perkins are actual sports analysts. And I know that. They do do the things they do and then say the things they say to get more views and more clicks and to be controversial for people to tune in to see what stupid things they say next i know this but they're just giving me and youtubers like uncut hoops more fuel and more videos and more clips to react to to you know build a platform i have a very small platform but i love my platform as, as soon as i reach a thousand subscribers it's like, I don't want to grow any more than that. Like, a thousand subscribers is an ultimate goal for me. For other YouTubers and all that, a thousand subscribers is just the beginning. But for me, that's an ultimate goal. If I reach that, then I've accomplished what I've always wanted to accomplish on YouTube. So, if you guys do enjoy, please hit the like button and subscribe. And let's get into the reaction. So, as you guys might have seen... Mario Chalmers, a former NBA champion, and teammate LeBron Yeah, former NBA champion because of the, you know, super team. team he, hold on. Team I let that the through. NBA on fire with a very controversial take. As Chalmers said players in LeBron's era didn't fear him like Michael Jordan. Not even like Michael Jordan. I fear, I would fear Stephen Curry more, more than LeBron because of... If Curry takes it personally, then I know he's just going to start banging threes in, in everybody's face. And that that's haunting. Now, as you can imagine, these comments blew up and had Shannon Sharp in absolute shambles. All right, Shannon, jump in here. Is there any truth to what Mario Chalmers is saying? No, that's his opinion. Um, the question is, ask Magic Johnson, was he afraid of Mike? Ask Larry... This is going to backfire in his face. Was he afraid of Mike? As a matter of fact, ask the Detroit Pistons. Were they ever afraid of Michael Jordan? And I guarantee you the answer would be no. Now, this is what we got. This, so I'm trying to figure out, Skip. So from the time LeBron broke through with the Heat, when he went to the Heat. So you mean to tell me a man that ran the Eastern Conference for eight straight years? What, nobody afraid? So stopping Shannon right there, his first point was bringing up the Pistons. Magic and Larry Bird, and saying those players and teams did not fear Michael Jordan. Oh my God! Come on, these ads. So first off, fear it is subjective. There's no measurement of fear and how fearful a player is. But looking at those eras, you know, deep dive into it, I think Jordan obviously was feared league wide. As looking at Larry Bird, after Jordan dropped 60 on his team, he called MJ God. Maddie Johnson, the best point guard in NBA history, refused to trash talk Jordan, only doing it once 
and learning the hard way to never do it again. And for the Pistons, I think 100% they fear Jordan. That's why they hard fouled him. That's why they punched him every time he got into the paint. That's why they hit him every chance they got. And their whole game plan and defensive strategy was to stop him a one singular player. Exactly. Their whole strategy was to beat bro up. Hold on, the boys Braden and the and the guys are texting in the group chat, so I might I might get on with them later. Might get some footage for a commentary video, who knows? Indirectly it's pretty obvious. Even players in the eighties, before Jordan was winning, feared his game and his overall ability. And these players aren't just average guys or even all stars. They are first ballot Hall of Famers with multiple championships. Mm. And Shannon's second point talked about LeBron James in Eastern Conference making eight straight finals. And while that is true, and LeBron was dominant, that e eight straight finals. Eight. So this has to be in 2016. Oh, yeah, he only had, like, three chips. Yeah, yeah, eight straight finals finals and five straight losses. That is, that is sad. That is pitiful. Conference, objectively, was pretty weak. Compared to the West, where it was an absolute gauntlet for some years, you had seven or eight teams winning 50-plus games. And when it comes to LeBron James, of course, he has lost numerous finals his two most embarrassing losses being 07 and 2011. when you lose in the nba finals on the biggest stage the overall mystique and aura of that player is heavily diminished the most compared finals to someone like jordan who in the crazy. finals never lost and to be clear i'm not saying lebron james wasn't feared but compared to jordan the it's fear not factor close. isn't comparable Everybody fear him, too. If you got people calling you God or Black Jesus, like, come on. There ain't no way. And you're you're trying to compare fear factors? If you're getting called Black Jesus, then you probably the most feared being on the planet. It's not even close. He wants 98. In his era, he dominated like no other. Going 6-0 over the West... 19-1 versus the East, beating nine 50-win teams and seven 60-win teams. To put it quite simply, LeBron in his prime ran a conference. Compared to Jordan in his prime, he ran, who ran an league. entire league. Yeah. And at the core of it, that's why Jordan mm -hmm. was more feared than LeBron James. I feel like, no, I, feel like I, should, I could just end the video right here. It's eight minutes long, which is pretty long, but... Same thing with the other Uncut Hoops reaction videos. They got were like 17 plus minutes long, meaning, you know, YouTube pushes out the longer videos 20,000 times getting pushed out. The Deadpool reaction video, 300 views, which is very good, but only pushed out 8,000 times. So if it got pushed out as many times as the other Uncut Hoops reaction videos, it probably would have got more views. Said after being eliminated by the LeBron four or six times, he seems real frustrated to continue losing to the same team or the same person. It's real frustrating. And Danny Ainge, why did he? That's frustrating. He never said, "Oh, I, I, I trembled in my, I trembled in my, my Jordans." Whenever I play, played, uh, whenever I played LeBron, I, I put on a pair of LeBron bronze just for him to go easy on me. No, like, he said he was annoyed. Annoyed. Big three together. Okay, as the uh, New Jersey Nets, why they gave up what they gave up to get Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, to pair them with Joe Johnson and Darren Williams. Why would they do that, Skip? Oh my god. Hey, I'd rather watch, watch this whole ad than listen to what Shannon Sharp was saying, bro. Now, stopping Shannon right there, like with most LeBron James fans, correlation does not equal causation. And looking at the 08 Celtics, yes, at that time period, they assembled a super team. But by them doing that, they weren't fearing LeBron James. As LeBron at that point 
had not even won a championship, let alone a single finals game. And to make a more general point, when a team assembles multiple superstars, all-stars, they are doing that to win a championship, not because they fear a player or a team. And Shannon did cite Paul George as one player LeBron James beat multiple times. But for PG, he not once said he feared LeBron James. What exactly, and the fact that PG was cooking the heat, don't get it wrong, prime PG, well, PG's doing better now, but Paul George back on the Pacers was cooking LeBron. And that's because PG had a garbage squad back there. Or on the Pacers, and he was single-handedly carrying. And and let's not forget the fact that PG was dropping like what twenty-two a game. Aim on Bron and the Heat. Said is that losing LeBron James was frustrating. Compared to Jordan's era, where players legitimately feared him or wouldn't dare talk trash to him. And speaking of great Pacers players, look at Reggie Miller. There's iconic stories of him refusing to talk trash to quote unquote black Jesus. And the one time he did, Jordan shut him down and dropped 40. And what, 89? Compared to this year, where LeBron James was outplayed and beat by a rookie, Benedict Matherin, who called him out during the offseason. And speaking of rookies, a young Kevin Garnett was definitely fearless. When it came to Jordan, trash talking him didn't go well. As J.R. Ryder has a famous story of MJ killing a naive Timberwolves team. After that, Garnett never once trash talked Mike again. Man. And even a couple of years ago, Charles Barkley asked Shaq point blank, Did you fear MJ? And Shaq said flat out, Yes, he was terrified. That is Shaquille O'Neal, the big diesel. The, the most dominant player time. in basketball history. That is not Al Horford from the 2015 Hawks. That is Shaquille O'Neal being afraid of Michael Jordan. There are tons and tons of stories, quotes, anecdotes of players being terrified of Jordan. From all-stars, role players, all the way to Hall of Famers and top 10 players. And to prove my point even further, Shannon Sharp himself said Jordan mm. was different and quote, godlike. He don't look real. He doesn't. He doesn't. The first time I met him, I'm looking at him, and he, I know he thought I was crazy because it, it, it's like he was levitating. He and, and, and I know you're not supposed to play reverence, and you're not supposed to be blasphemous like this, but he's like a god. That is bro, true. if you're saying he's like a god, like, bro, I have never, out of all the years, I have watched... Shannon Sharp yap about LeBron. I've never, ever heard him say that he was a god. Or compared him to a god, ever. The biggest LeBron fan alive being in awe of Michael Jordan. That just goes to show you guys, Jordan's it factor, his fear factor, his wow factor, was off the charts and definitely higher and LeBron James. Bang. Yeah. Exactly. Congrats, Carol. Now you're really going to have to get those new dentures. Yeah. The problem that I have is that when you say Jordan is the growth, you do everything you can to discredit LeBron. If you want to say, look, Jordan got six M five MVPs. He got six finals, six chips. He got. He actually he has six MVPs. Many scoring titles. He scored this many points a game. He averaged this. He did this and that. Gotcha. It seems like when they try to make their point, I believe you can make your point saying someone is the best without trying to be disrespectful and discredit. What? Okay. The criticisms and all of the credit that people give LeBron, in order to make the debate easier for the the people defending Michael Jordan and saying he's the GOAT, you have to discredit LeBron fans' claims, which are not only easy to discredit, don't don't get me wrong, I do it all the time. Um, it's not disrespectful to discredit their claims. It, it's actually more respectful to do that than let them be wrong. 
Now look, Shaden Sharp's overall point of not downplaying discrediting players in a vacuum is fine, and I agree with it. But when it comes to Shannon, this take now is pretty hypocritical. As over the past five to seven years, he spewed nonsense about Jordan countless times, saying he played weak finals competition, he was a quitter, he got praised for losing, and without Scotty, he wasn't a winner. The slander can throw Jordan's that way. Crazy. I don't really care about it. It makes good content. But you can't I claim know. the moral high ground when you're yourself. Because Jordan was blood. winning without Scotty, but he. The thing is, he there's only so much winning you can do when you don't have a single teammate averaging above twenty points a game. Cause, cause, Scotty he was he was averaging what what seventeen through like twenty points per game in his career. And there's only so much you can do when you have teammates that can shoot very well. Exactly. Especially that in the eighty four Bulls, they was coming off of the one of the worst seasons they had, if I if I remember properly. Miscrediting players. Eight years of running the Eastern Conference, and ain't nobody said, "Man, ooh, I want to go back and, and skip." I was trying to find footage where people say, "Man, I can't wait to play the Cavaliers." Man, I can't wait to get the Miami Heat because that's the matchup that I want. Mm. Now, I want to be very clear in saying this: LeBron, of course has been feared by players, coaches, teams, and even fans. Boy, is there a fear? That is undeniable. But compared to Jordan, what, the fear factor, Duncan? once again, isn't the same. As when it comes to LeBron James and his era and being feared, for the most part, he played in the weak Eastern Conference. As the Bulls by 2012, they were cooked with D-Rose being injured. Boston by 2013, they were aging out. The Indiana Pacers, while competitive, at the end of the day, were being led by Paul George, who was 22 and 23 years old. And looking at 2015, the East was so bad, the Atlanta Hawks, the Atlanta Hawks won 60 games. In 2017, Isaiah Thomas at 5'9", led Boston to the first seed. Once again, I'll say it, LeBron James dominated the Eastern Conference and put fear in half the NBA. Mm. But when it comes to the NBA Finals, half losing the NBA? six times, mm. the fear factor is going to be there like it is for Jordan. Okay. You see, that's where that's where he got me. If I ever had to play LeBron James, if I'm in my prime, let's just say my prime is 15 points a game, all that, six rebounds, four assists. Let's say that's my prime. If I had to meet up against LeBron in the playoffs, I wouldn't be scared. Mainly considering the fact that, hey, even if he does beat us uh, and moves on, he's not going to make it that far. And even if he does, his record is, what, 40%? 40% in the finals? If he, It will be a, a fucking miracle if he wins, let alone win the finals. As looking at the Bulls, winning six championships in eight years, never losing the finals, is unassailable. Compared to LeBron James, who went 2-2 two two in Miami, and 1-4 in, in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Everybody trying to stay out of the 7 or the 8 spot. Let's wait till the very, very last minute. After Ronald, after Marty Rosen, and Kyle Lowry, after Wayne Casey, did they fear LeBron James? I think you get right. to a man I think you see yet. Yeah. I think Shannon might be. You're comparing a few players to the entire league. You're comparing a few a few players to perennial all stars and some of the greatest players of all time fearing Michael Jordan. In my entire point about this video. As when it comes to LeBron James, he put fear uh -huh. into that, that that's my that's the main thing I'm mad about, how he's comparing Kyle Lowry and who I, I don't know who else he was comparing them to to magic johnson larry bird and the bad boy pistons now oh yeah even shaq said he was scared he was scared of jordan he said he was terrified thank you dad bad eastern conference 
And he's like, Kyle Lowry, yeah, the he, everybody. Kyle Horford, no, he scared Mosey Bogue so bad to the point where he made him drop his point averages in half. In half. Compared to Jordan, who had Shaq, Reggie, Magic, Kevin Garnett, legit Hall of Famers being fearful been talking trash to him. Said what I said. And listen to the so-called LeBron James era. One thing that hurts him is he lost to his fellow. I swear, whenever somebody says that the 2010s was LeBron's era, it makes legit no sense considering we got players like Stephen Curry who won more rings in his era than LeBron did, which is insane. How you have other players winning more championships than you in your supposed era? Stars. And some and some people say championships don't matter. Championship shows that you're good at winning. Winning proves that you are a good basketball player. No, it doesn't matter what your stats are. That's the main problem my team has. They are so focused on on scoring in their stats instead of focusing on winning they don't focus on winning that's why we always lose well not always lose that's why we we lost three games because they're focusing on scoring more than winning they pull up threes when they're wide open to the lane it's just great players losing to kevin garnett dwight howard Dirk Nowitzki, Tim Duncan, Steph Curry, KD, even Chris Paul. And guys like Kawhi Leonard, Kobe, and Giannis got one ring, if not multiple rings, on LeBron's watch. My overall point is pretty simple. LeBron James is fear. But like everything, there's levels to it. So, as always, thank you guys for watching. Okay, no, sorry. Sorry, Uncut. I'm going to have to steal that from you. So, once again, I'm going to say it for him. If you guys did enjoy, please hit the like button and subscribe. We are trying to hit 1,000 subscribers before March 15th. And if this video gets more than, let's say, 10, 15 likes, then I will do another Uncut Hoops reaction video to, let's say, JJ Reddick, maybe? I love you guys, and I will see you guys later. Bye.